Ultrasound biomicroscopy uses, of course, all the same principles as any type of ultrasound, but we have a little bit of a different examination technique. Because the high frequency we're using, in this case 50 megahertz for UBM, it doesn't penetrate very far into the eye. So we are going to be imaging directly under the probe. Unlike our posterior segment B, when I would place the probe inferiorly to look superiorly, I will be placing the probe directly over the actual tissue I need to image in the UBM. There are different ways of performing UBM. A lot of people have used for many years a scleral shell that's very similar to the one we used for biometry, only it's flared and the probe can go into the fluid here. The mark on the probe indicates the right side of the UBM, so that if I put my transducer with the mark towards the nose and I do an axial scan, There we see the eye, the cornea, the anterior lens, the iris, and the pupillary space. So this is nasal and this is temporal. This is the nasal ciliary sulcus, the temporal ciliary sulcus, the pupillary space, the anterior lens capsule. You can see the bag and the anterior cornea and posterior cornea underneath the bag. So from the beginning, it's nice to do an, an axial scan. I usually do horizontal. In this case, in other cases of positioning of an implant, it's important to do verticals and obliques in the event that the, an IOL has shifted, for example. When I'm looking at the angles now, what I might do is go look at more of a radial scan so I will, in this probe, I like to put the marker away from this pupil so that my scan will look like that. And my job again is to put the area of interest into the focal zone. So now I have a really nice angled scan. That happens to be her 3 o'clock angle where you see the ciliary body, the pigment epithelium of the iris, the zonules attaching to the anterior lens capsule, and a beautiful open angle, and the, the curvature of her iris. So I would label each of these as whatever clock hour I've imaged. For transverse, I would now take the probe, for example, let's go back and I'll put the probe marker superiorly, and I'll do a vertical scan. So uh, this will be superior and this will be inferior and I'm going to do what I kind of call a gonio view. So I'm going to do again sort of an axial type image like that where you can see the cornea and the iris. And now what I'm going to do is start sweeping out and you see it get narrower, more narrow. And there are the ciliary processes. There's more ciliary processes until I go way off to the square and I've actually lost. Look a little to the left for me where I lost some contact. So I can go way out to the periphery. There's her anterior lens capsule, the iris. I keep going farther out, farther out, ciliary processes, and then past to the aura serrata. And that's very useful for looking at and documenting multiple iris cysts uh, a ciliary body lesion, um, ciliary body cysts, foreign bodies, that sort of thing.